B500 get into the wild card. 86 got the Phillies all the way to the World Series. I hate to break it to you, man. I don't think it was your vision. Tipo un kawaii. This podcast is perfectly named, I would say. I hate to make excuses for Sandy and the rest of the people. No, you don't. You've been doing it all year. I do. I do hate it. I'm just going to say it. I'm <laughs> fucking hitting bombs to fucking Nyocho. Like, Jack that into my veins. If that continues, there's no way we make the playoffs. No question about it. I am ready to get hurt again. Welcome, everyone, to episode number 13 of the Battered Marlins Fans Podcast, unless you are from Boston. In that case, puck you. South Florida absolutely <laughs> runs Boston. We swept the Red Sox. We beat the what the Celtics. And I'm already forgetting the Bruins and all those other scrubs. So it feels good to be a South Florida fan right now. 14 games over 500 for the first time in a long time. And actually, before we get started, the Marlins just put this up right here. This is the first time that we are over, five, over 14 games. Since 1997 and 2003, and we all know how those years ended. So, Don't feeling pretty me. good. Feeling pretty <laughs> good. So, before I pass it on over to the other battered fans, I just wanted to show real quick, I am feeling good. I am Oh, that's happy. sweet. I got the Billy the Marlin hat because I'm feeling fun. This is a fun day. It's going to be a fun episode. I am feeling good. Now, I want to pass it over first over to my man, Cali, because you're rocking that big L on the head in the Red Sox red. So, I don't know if that's why you did it, but I like it. It's not. This one's actually a shout out to a former player of mine. Um, got he I, he I, he played for me for for a while in high school, and now he's he just graduated from this school right here, uh, it's Lancaster Bible College up in in uh, Pennsylvania, and he just got into law school. So, oh, awesome. so th- this one's a he he always watches. So this one's a shout out to to our boy Danny Navarro. Congratulations, kid. Also. Congrats, Danny. So with, with with Danny, he's a he's a testament that if you want to play college baseball bad enough, there's a place for you to go because he wasn't very good. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, nah, I'm messing around. But he, he he's a guy that he worked really hard. He was never the best on his team, but always one of the hardest workers. And then so I want to give Danny that shout out. And then on top of that, considering our guest, I'm wearing the, uh, oh, wearing the oh, ooh, that's the, fire right now. Wearing the Marlins <laughs> historian swag today. So. There we go. That took me like five hours to do. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I, did grab I figured it had. Well. I figured it had to be, and it's like, man, like I, I can point out like where I used to sit with like my my dad and my grandmother and stuff. So that that was yeah, definitely awesome. a nostalgia piece for me. So I love that. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, let's see. Bring it over to Brent. And how are you doing, sir? Oh, man, I am flying high. I'm all yeah. in on, on your positivity for the whole season. Playoffs, <laughs> baby. It's happening. Oh, but, finally. You guys you guys would curse me whenever I try to be positive. Listen, as a Marlins shit a fan, time, it's very dangerous to, to hope <laughs> like this. So I'm fully Turn prepared to get burned. Surprise okay. fire sale at the deadline or some shit. I don't know. <laughs> but that's the, that's the fun of sports. That's the fun of sports. Yeah. So I got my uh, classic Marlins hat on. It's twofold, though, because I've got the uh, Jacksonville Jumbo Shrimp version because they put out the most amazing looking cocktail that they are serving on 4th of July. So any listeners up there, go get your red, white, and blue cocktail with like, it's got like blueberry vodka some cherries and something else in it and it looked delicious so get out there and see it and then i got I something been... for my boy spaz a couple oh, no. weeks ago i said he had the coolest shirt i've oh! ever seen marlin oh! style there we go i went on ebay <laughs> and nice. this baby cost me 15 bucks what? very very expensive but but is it beautiful <laughs> Yeah, man, I can't wait to wear it to the ballpark with you, man. Yeah, hell yeah, thank you. We'll yeah, do it. And we're going to talk about the ballpark because it's not as easy to make it out there as it was earlier in the season. Yeah, we'll no, my $2 that. tickets are gone. I know, man, That, was, that that's heartbreaking. <laughs> I was checking out some, some games for next week, and yeah, it's, it's not that cheap anymore. Uh, yeah. How are you doing, Spaz, the man with the stash? I am feeling fantastic. I went sleeveless today, showing the guns a little bit. Uh, <laughs> and the a permit for those? Yeah, I had to bring in the 93 <laughs> inaugural hat and these bad boys that kind of don't fit me, but they're like the old logo on there. Uh, you know, feeling good after that uh, after that sweep. So, and I'm excited to have Cliff Floyd, man. Super yes, excited yes. 
we have a very special guest. I'm sure you might have heard him already talk. Francisco, the Marlins historian. If you don't follow him already on social media, make sure you follow him because he gives you all that good stuff from present and definitely from the past. How are you doing, Francisco? I'm I'm ecstatic right now. I mean, this has been uh, a very great as far as being able to dunk on Boston fans. Yeah, <laughs> we've, we've been able to do it since April and yes. just one by one. And I, I was fully ready for this. I'm not normally petty with my Marlins account, but <laughs> I just had to. Like this, this might be the only chance I get to do this, especially because I also do Panthers history. I do Panthers historian as well. And I, I was just like, they, they beat the Bruins and all that stuff. Then the Heat beat the Celtics. And I was just like, I'm ready. I, like, I marked, like circled it on the calendar, Boston versus Miami. And I was hoping this would be the outcome. So, of course, after I, I don't normally tweet the official, I don't reply to the official team accounts for the opposing teams like um, like Loud Marlins fan does. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I just had to. I just had to. So for, you know, game one, Panthers being the Bruins, like just two and a half minutes of, you know, sad Boston fans and sad Patrice Bergeron and Brad Marchand. And then, you know, game two, Jimmy with the timeout symbol and. And then even game three, like today, I just posted like Tua, you know, because it's September. The Dolphins are down there or up there, whatever. And their nightmare is going to continue. But even For like sure. Boston fans are beaten down now yeah. at this point. Like they're, they're not even replying to this because they were replying like, oh, <laughs> you guys didn't win the Stanley Cup. Oh, you didn't win the NBA Finals. And like they're not even replying anymore. Like they are they are fully like there's no more will. And it's, it's great to want. see. And nothing makes it's me happier. It's what we live for. So, but I am wearing this is the the Marlin spring training hat from a few seasons back. Oh yes, yes, yes. I just love the look. I love the solo fish design. Oh, me too. That's my favorite. I wish they would just go with that permanently. Exactly. I, I think it's a little too cluttered with the M. I kind of yep. just they just did this, uh, and it's and you guys are always you know you guys are wearing the retro stuff, and I love that because I, I I'm I'm a proponent of the teal evolution. I think one day it will happen. I'm hoping that sales of merchandise and stuff shows that, look, this is the way it should be, as Toronto had done before, as San Diego had done before, as Milwaukee just did as well. There's teams that are just going to, like, hey, this is what people like and what people spend money on. So, But I'm wearing this today because as much as I, I like to talk about the past and I'm always posting about pro player stadium and all that stuff, I really do want new things to talk about. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, we, it, like, yeah, I'll dip into the 2003 reservoir for content, or, you know, when I need to. But like, I would really like something new to talk about. And there's been very little, you know, 2009 was the last winning record in a non shortened season. Right. 2020 was fine and short lived and cool. Uh, but you know, Giancarlo hit 59 home runs and all that stuff. Ichiro got his 3,000th hit and, and stuff. But, like, there's really, like, this is this is amazing. People are yeah. paying yeah. attention again. You know, it, it, they're repairing. They're, they're repairing the relationship with South Florida. And that's kind of something I'm also trying to expound, like, a, across the Internet is that, I honestly believe, and I've told this on other shows, I, I told this on, 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 on Fish on First podcast and all that stuff, like, I believe the Marlins' job, Bruce Sherman and the staff right now, all the way down to the players and, to, and everybody down on the field, is the hardest job in baseball. It's harder than Oakland. It's harder than Tampa Bay. It is the toughest one because it is the relationship that I think is hurt the most. Because the team is staying here, of course. We've got the ballpark, all this other stuff, but they've been they were so beaten down by the Loria regime by the end of it that it just there was the relationship was gone, 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 gone. And people really do love the Marlins. I honestly believe South Florida does love the Marlins. They just the Marlins haven't given love back to them. And now they're starting to. They're starting to with, with the play on the field, with the stuff they do off the field now. They're, they're they're trying. I honestly think they're they're really doing their best to try and set themselves up for the future, to welcome in the crowds of 20k 
then 25k then hopefully 30k and then hopefully a full-on sellout you know game game three of the nlds or something like that or maybe game one of the wild card round if no this is an event town if if, if it's a playoff game it'll get packed it'll be packed like like just just for that just for the the welcoming of stuff because i i'm a panthers fan i covered the panthers um uh for sb nation for for a few years and i saw what they went through tarping off the entire upper deck and crowds of like 10k 9k 8k the same thing the marlins went through the same sort of thing it's it's kind of eerie both birth out of wayne huizenga's womb you know but like the panthers with good ownership with an actual plan drafting good players signing guys and it took a while but south florida started jumping on board 2016 happened the crowds started becoming more steady okay steady 15k steady 16k now right now and it, and hopefully that'll explode next season but look what happened they they amended they 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 mended a lot of a lot of bridges uh along the way and i i think the marlins have that in them as well and this season's huge absolutely huge so uh that's my big giant monologue there to start but yeah no. uh, that, I, i'm looking forward Love to the it. future and that's why i'm wearing this you brought up 2020 stuff you brought well, I got this on one of the batting practice jerseys. From <laughs> oh, yeah, I love that one. Well, and, and <laughs> okay, I, and yeah, have, no big deal. <laughs> and I have the best giveaway that they've ever given. I, I mean, is that the one that's jerseys? satin that that's all niner? shiny and stuff? Yeah, yeah, it's the one that they gave away like a week or two ago. Two, oh, okay. Oh, no, one, right? okay. I thought, no, I thought no, you had like the 99 the, version of no, that. No, 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 no. <laughs> this is the, the giveaway that has Conine okay. in the back. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Awesome, awesome giveaway. Um, I, what I was going to say is you were talking about the 2020. And I actually hated that they made the playoffs in 2020. Oh my god! I hated it also, because okay. I uh, well, I knew they had no chance. And more than anything, I used to love the fact that the Marlins were the only team that had never lost a playoff series. I used to yeah. love that. Like, yeah. and then it went away once you once I made it 2020. Like they have no chance this year, and it just went away. But whatever. It's it, so, you, at least you can say you made it three years ago. I'm not a huge fan of that argument. And I know a lot of Marlins fans, especially people on Marlins Twitter. Uh, I, I, you know, they, they don't like the whole 2020 thing as a long suffering fan. I was, I was, I remember I was in a hotel room in Key Largo and I was crying from like, dude, I just wanted something to be happy about. It was a very tough time in the world. And it was a very tough time being a martyr. Sure. For sure. I felt it, whatever. I know it didn't mean anything fucking, you know, it was a dash to the playoffs or whatever. Uh, But man, I, I enjoyed the hell out of it. I don't like when people like, talk it down and i understand why they do it but i don't know man i enjoyed it no of course i mean you, if you make the postseason you're happy yeah. but just in the overall picture i used to i used to think that that was the coolest stat because yeah. it was the only professional team yeah. in yeah. all north american sports that had that and i thought that was yeah. really cool yeah yeah no i agree with that all right so um mr historian yes any cool or stats that you've come across that you think are just like people don't talk about this enough that kind of like the the playoff thing that we're, we hadn't lost Any, that you're like, i'm not a i I'm, a, I'm not a big stats guy of course i'm a lawyer ah, so like damn you know, me, numbers, me too. <laughs> numbers aren't a thing for me right so like <laughs> but I, I i do like dipping into like just obscure stuff as well just trying to find out these just uh, you know just weird things i mean there's there's stuff about like the past old Miami Marlins and stuff. They've had some Hall of Famers go like, like uh, I mean, like Jose Canseco played for the '80s Florida State League Marlins. I don't know if anybody knew that. Uh, Ferguson Jenkins, Hall of Fame pitcher, mm-hmm. also pitched for the uh, the Florida State League Marlins as well. Uh, Jim Palmer, the same thing. He also uh, pitched for the because they were the Orioles affiliate for a long time, and, and the oh, Orioles wow. had their spring training here in Miami. So, well, I found out. I found out last night. Uh, Spaz told me that Domingo Herman was part of the Marlins system. Yeah, he yeah, he was drafted. He was. That, yeah, yeah, I had no idea. He pitched that perfect game last night, and I was like, "Really? I had no idea." Yeah. Very uh, on brand. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so, like, uh, I mean, I mean, there's just kind of obscure things like that that I, I do like to try and find every once in a while just i because people do the numbers and stuff um mike ferguson he does a great job for for fishing the freaking mosquito in here i'm trying not to get malaria uh so (laughs) 
Oh, Lord. I almost got it. <laughs> Uh, anyways, uh, uh, he, for, for fish on first. And, and uh, so he, he always posts good stuff uh, as far as like uh, kind of doing the same thing that I do. So that, that's always nice to have like a backup when I'm like, oh, I did. I missed that one. Good thing he got that. Uh, but uh, I also like the knickknacks of Marlin's history as well. Like the, the artifacts, the, the ancient stuff, right? Like I got this yeah. tiny little pro player stadium right here. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. awesome. <laughs> like I got this, like <laughs> I bought this for like 15 bucks on eBay. I'm just like, look at this little thing. Look how cute it is. <laughs> you know, I mean you can't see it with the green screen in the field, but like, but no, there it is. It's got it's okay. got a teal monster and everything. Oh, hell yeah. And then that's I got awesome. this. And this is what I was gonna ask you. Do you guys have any like like little trinkets like this? I got this one too, which is so slightly bigger. I have been on the hunt for that since I saw that you got I one. I keep po like I, I scour eBay. Yeah. And po I keep posting it so that, like you guys. There's like, one can on buy there these. now. I love the teal tarp the and center field is, too. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, it's it, awesome. And the guy won't the most come down one. in price. Yeah. This is this the one's the most deep. Somebody's trying to sell this for like two thousand dollars. They're crazy. I bought this yes. for like fifty. That's the you one. Know? Yeah. Two K. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody I told him. That, I sent yeah, him an email and I was like, dude, listen, like that's like a. I, most i would go is 80 dollars. like what exactly you want to no. take it and he was like no i'm standing firm and i was like all right forget you i'll just wait till the next one comes I, up and he doesn't even realize there's been like four or five of them since and like they're they've been selling it for like 50 most i've seen was like 100 bucks for this yeah and you know it's it's nice it's like incredibly detailed i'm not trying to zoom yeah. this in here but you can see the teal monster there's like a dolphins logo on like the scoreboard up here Oh, oh, oh wow. yeah! Look at yeah, that. like oh. it is cool, legitimately very accurate to how it looked back in like I think this was like 2002 era or 1999, 1999, 1999 uh, Pro Player Stadium, 97 Championship banner in in left as well. Like this is this is my favorite piece right here of all my Marlins trinkets right now. I am ridiculously jealous right now. That is yeah. beautiful, man. I got yeah, these man. these coasters as well for oh, <laughs> Marlins cool. Park. Uh, yeah. I remember. <laughs> I remember those. Yeah. I think the, the, the coolest thing I have, well, my dad actually has, uh, this was back in like 90, I was a kid. It was like 95, 96. We went, we played against the Padres. I, I know that much. And I begged my dad to take me to this game because I wanted to see Tony Gwynn and all that fun stuff. Yeah. Um, so my dad, the company my dad worked for at the time had this sweet and they had like the beer taps up there, and one of them had like the Marlins logo on it. When the game was over, my dad straight up stole it from Marlins, from, the Marlins, <laughs> from Pro Player, and he still has it in his house to this day. That's one of the cooler. I think that's one of the cooler ones we have. And I still have the ticket. I, I would get it to my bedroom, but my wife's asleep right now. <laughs> and I have a, I have a ticket from that game too that I have encased. Cali, I have I have a quick. This thing is my that. favorite. What, what bobblehead is that? Charles this Hill? is Niner, the All Star oh, okay. Game MVP. Oh, nice. Nice. Bobblehead they gave away. When I heard they were going to give this out, I just like Ali, I begged my parents. I'm like, please. It was, it was like on some random day, and they were like, no, we're not going. And then my dad surprised me, and we got down there, and I got it, and it was like the best thing ever. It was me and like 300 of my fa my friends because no one else was there. That's uh, that's a little Beautiful. special memories, man. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, Spaz, you were saying something? Yeah, so real quick, uh, because uh, Callie stole a really beautiful tap handle, well, his dad did. Uh, <laughs> when we first got to the new park, I lived down the street, um, and they had a Marlins lager. And I've always been a beer guy. I've always really liked beer, craft beer, and all that. So they had a Marlins lager on draft. And I asked the bartender, and I'm like, hey, uh, listen, I'll have a Marlins lager. Uh, this is before Biscayne Bay. I mean, this is the, when the park first opened. It was a Marlins ale, or it wasn't even Marlins lager. It was like Marlins air or whatever. So I was like, oh, I'll have one of those. Do you know who brews it? And she's like, no, like not really. And then she like was kind of holding back and like it had a cool Marlins logo on it. Like it looked legit. And then she turns to me and she's like, it's Coors Light. And I was like, okay. <laughs> oh, oh, no. <laughs> I was like, all right, cool. Uh, that's <laughs> Which, like, that's fine. You know? <laughs> if you listen, and I know you, you guys have mentioned David Sampson and – um yeah. It that feels very that's so Samson. Yeah, on par. Yeah. Like, yeah, 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 exactly. Just yeah. um, and I'll I'll say my piece about this because I don't want to harp on them, but well, har it's oh, very eye opening. Yes. <laughs> it's very eye opening because I don't mention too much about him or Jeffrey Laurie on my account because I think it's it's very volatile. I'm very volatile yeah. about it. Like I, I get I get angry thinking about stuff like that. 
back in the day, uh, seeing him on Levitard and stuff like that. And I'm like, I, I, I commend Jeremy Taché. Um, I've, I've spoken with him before. He's actually been on one of my podcasts before as well. Like I, I, I commend them for not strangling the man. <laughs> Cause that's, what, I feel like I would do that in right. the name of all Marlins fans, yeah. but we would um, all pay your bail. Yeah, the judge would let you go. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was like, Samson. Fuck that guy. Yeah. Pretty good. <laughs> but like, um, judge beats him with a gavel. <laughs> it, it's it, it's it's crazy. Like, just hearing the stories from back in the day, like how he they they purposefully mess with the pitch, uh, the pitch radar, the speed oh. radar when Brad Penny pitched to lower it in order to keep him angry. So that you could pitch harder, like all the things <laughs> that they did, like the, everything that they did. It's every time I hear him, it sounds like, OK, it sounds like he. Yes, this is how you run a sports team. But every time I hear it, it's like that's not how you run a sports team very well. Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. like you guys were running a sports team and you knew how to run a sports team, but not at the upper echelons of how to run a sports team. Like right. this is this is the like. um like if you guys if you guys were a checkers franchise, it would be the worst checkers franchise out there, <laughs> right? People would be like, "No, I want to go to the good checkers. We're not going to that one, right?" That's what it seemed like the Marlins at that time were running as. Even when they opened the ballpark, it was great. It was nice. It was brand new. Whatever the fr- freaking monstrosity in center field, all that stuff. And I don't know if you guys have been to other ballparks around around Major League Baseball. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I went on my first big trip with my dad in 2019. Uh, we hit up Tampa with Tro- Tropicana Field. We hit up Truist Park in Atlanta. Oh, nice. We hit up uh, Nationals Park in, in D.C. And I've been to Fenway as well. Oof, I and, to Fenway. Man, I, I, I don't like the Braves. I don't like the Braves at all. I was at the game when Acuna tore his ACL, and I was just like, yes. Uh, but <laughs> I, and I, I, I make no qualms about it. F that. Like, just, just screw them. Um, yep. I, I, so and the, the Braves can blow their load in the regular season right now, and we'll see what happens come October. All right, because uh, that's what their teams did from '91 through 2005. Yep. One shortened season championship. So, anyways, mm-hmm. enough petty. Uh, but Truist Park is a very well done baseball stadium. Yeah, yeah. everything like they got it right, mm-hmm. inside, outside, the stuff around the stadium. And so I go back to Miami and I'm just like, they, they really didn't try. The Laurier regime did not try with that ballpark. At really? all. I love that ballpark. I, I think I, it's nice. It, it's nice enough, but it can be right. better. And this regime is, is starting to do that. You know, they yeah. started painting things on the walls. They yeah. started, they, like they give a little museum now. More variety with the food, chaos, oh, right, right, right. the museum. Like, uh, like, but during the Lori regime, they did the bare minimum with that right, ballpark. Right, right. right, and it's just those little things that other teams do around the league that puts them above what the Marlins had done during that For regime. Sure. So sure. it it all makes sense when I hear him talk. And it's yeah. like, yes, once again, you knew how to run a baseball team, but not how to run a baseball team well. Correctly. Compared yeah. to Atlanta or Philly or Washington or New York or Los Angeles, all, Chicago, all these other teams that know how to. St. Louis. Create a, yes, yeah, St. Louis welcoming ballpark atmosphere. Coors Field. I went to Coors Field last year. It's beautiful. And they, they were 1993, same expansion teams, right? And Coors is just everywhere you go, you as they haven't won a World Series. They they have not won a World Series. They only made the playoffs like what four times in their history, and, mm-hmm. and they made one World Series uh, uh, appearance. There you go. They haven't they got won swept, it. I think too. Yeah, against the Red Sox in two thousand seven. But everywhere you go, you see snippets of their history in each part of their concourse you see all their silver sluggers all the teams that want all their players that won batting titles all their rookies of the years all their all-star uh players just things that made you feel like this is a baseball stadium right right, right. and lone lone depot park didn't do that and it's stuff that they're finally starting to do they opened the museum that was huge massive i'm i'm you know i'm happy about it i think it could be better I think it could be bigger because they have the space for it. Yeah, but it's a start. 
it's a start. It, well, they've already added to start. it this season, which is great. Yeah. Like they've added some new stuff during the season. So I, I hope, yeah. like you said, it gets bigger. But I think Lone Depot Park now is better than when it opened. Exactly. It, it, and, and, and I, I, but it's with this regime that started yeah. it, starting in, um, in absolutely. I'll never in 2018. forget. I'll never forget going to games the first season and I would go with my dad pretty often. And my dad's in landscaping. He's like that. That's, that's his, his business. And we've gone to, we've been to a bunch of ballparks. I've been to a bunch of ballparks. I've played, I've played in a bunch of ballparks in college. Um, Marlins park. Everyone, when it opened was the first park I saw I've been to that I'm seeing patches of dead grass in the all outfield. around the outfield. Okay. And my dad is like, "What is this shit, bro? Like, you, you you fuck the you you fuck over the taxpayers enough to get the stadium, and you still can't even spend enough money to like properly maintain your your field." Yeah. And I think it just like when it comes to Samson, I can go on a tangent about this, but I'll I'll, yeah. I'll contain myself. But like, I hate listen to him on the Levitard show, and I love the Levitard show. I think that I and I do I, I think they do a great job of kind of like poking the bear and getting him to like say all the dumb shit. But I'll, I'll never forget listening to him justify the Miguel Cabrera trade. And I'm oh. like, these motherfuckers were ruthless. Mm. And not only that, they, like, part of me thinks, like, if they told me, like, yeah, we, we did it for money. Like, we, we did it to hit a certain number and then we're still the team and be rich. If they said that, I'd at least be like, all right, I respect you. But, don't, but the fact that they're justifying all their actions tells me that they were deluded to believe that they were doing a good job. And I was listening to that. You had this this trade with the Angels in place. And, like, you know, we were, we were going to get back better players. The name escaped me at the moment. But then we ended up trading them to the Tigers because they one saw they knew they weren't going to be able to pay Miguel Cabrera. They didn't want to pay Miguel Cabrera. Not that they couldn't. They just didn't want to. That's something he's admitted over and over again. They could have afforded to pay these players. They didn't want to because they didn't care to. But the fact that they, they made that switch to trade them to the Tigers for – I still remember the names, Mike, Mike Rebello, Andrew Miller, Burke Badenhop, and there Maven. Was one more. and Maven. Yeah, which Maven was the only one that had like a decent career. Andrew Miller had one or two. I loved Hopper. Andrew Miller revived his career as he, a relief, as a, pitcher. As a relief pitcher. Yes. Yeah. And Badenhop was an okay reliever throughout his Hopper career. Shit. Huh? I thought Cameron Maven was going to be a baller. So Cameron Maven, fun fact, has a record for highest batting average ever in the state of North Carolina for high school baseball. <laughs> And most hits, I think, too. Yeah, as a should have stayed there. North Carolinian. <laughs> he, does, he does. He does color for the Yankees now. Yeah, and the thing. Yeah. What's funny is Cameron Maven. He sucked when we first got him. Then he kind of had his journeyman career. Then he came back to the Marlins at the end. I don't know if you guys remember, and he was okay with us. You know, yeah. he had an okay kind of end twilight to his career. But you know, just just listening to him justify a lot of these moves that that he made, the Beckett trade, the Lowell trade, you know, all these, and it's like, and they do this all on the. The premise that they won they won a World Series in two thousand three with a team that they didn't build, yeah, right. a team that so, was already in place. So, and Dan, you had talked to me about Marlins history. I'm sorry, I'm kind of like hijacking no, some of this stuff. No, but no, it's, all good. Here, baby. Hearing Callie's it, story mm -hmm. is the pain of the diehard Marlins fans, yeah. but it's also the pain of the casual fans here in South Florida that's yeah. oh, scared I, I, people away. I 100 percent understand it. Yeah. I, I've been I've been trying to be very optimistic when we started this podcast week one of the season. And I think that these guys were getting a little annoyed because I was trying to be so positive. I said, we'll get to 86 wins and we'll have a chance at a wild card. And they're like, shut the hell up. You're going to jinx it. Yeah. And I said, just keep trucking along 500. We're going to make it. They're like, shut the hell up. But it looks like they're coming around. And I understand we've been it's I feel like after such a big sweep. The first 30 minutes have kind of been kind of like, you know, negative. So let, let, let's try to amp it back up a little bit. Let's, let's get on the positivity, back on the optimistic side of things. <laughs> Over the last two mm. weeks, we had a couple home series, and the stadium has been rocking. Now, I love it. I've gone to, I want to say, five or six games so far this year. And I, I usually go with my wife and my two kids. And for all four tickets, I haven't spent more than $30. I went to look for tickets for next week's series against it's the Cardinals next week. And the cheapest ticket, I know it's still pretty cheap, but the cheapest ticket is like 18 bucks. I'm like, God damn, what just happened? So 
I'm <laughs> ecstatic that people are showing up to the stadium. I, I'm glad that things are going. Now, I don't know how it's looking because I heard the parking situation gets a little hectic now that the stadium is kind of packed. But let's start with Spaz. Spaz, how are you feeling seeing that the stadium is finally rocking, especially you being a season ticket holder? I mean, I, I, I love seeing so many people there. Uh, I was there for the Sunday game. I went with some buddies. The bobblehead. I was there for the bobblehead game. Yeah, yeah. So I went with some buddies. And uh, for the first time, by the way, if you listen to the podcast, you know about the crackhead joke. For the first time, I had a crackhead come up to me and offer me money for my bobblehead. So I was <laughs> to be like, yo, yo, here, I'll buy you, uh, you know, 20 bucks, this and that. So it feels nice to be on the other end of that. Uh, but man, my parking, I parked two blocks away. I, I don't like doing the garages because when you get out, the garages are, you know, especially. Disaster. The, yeah, it's a disaster. Mm-hmm. So I like parking on the street or the, you know, $10 mm-hmm. no blocky. You know, Abuelo. <laughs> Abuelo y abuela. Uh-huh. Abuelo, yeah. Blocky. Those are my, <laughs> I, I don't like going in the garages. So my parking is two blocks away. And dude, I, for the Sandy uh, bobblehead, I got there an hour and 10 early. No parking. Everyone was already there already. I was like, God, dude, that's never happened to me ever, ever. Yeah. Yeah, so, wow. I mean, people are going, dude. People are showing up. I mean, it, and, and and when I got there, the lot, the first lot, when you're coming uh, east on, what is that, 7? That's 7. That's, that's home plate. Yeah, yeah. So, the yeah. first lot was already full. And they were putting everyone in the other lot. So, Oof. I haven't seen that in a very, very long time. People are going out, dude. And and to be honest, that game was so much fun and so many people out there. And we'll talk about Yuri a little later. But, yeah, fuck yeah, man. I, I love that people are going out. And it was coming off of a walk-off the night before. Now, I, yeah. I have a theory as to what just happened, though. I feel like South Florida has been on such a high with the Heat, eight seeds to the finals, and then the Panthers, eight seeds to the finals. People that weren't basketball or hockey fans – we're just in it, and they're like, this is amazing, and they got into it. And all of a sudden, both those teams lose, and there's a void. They're watching sports that they never watched, but they're seeing successful teams. And I think that the Marlins doing well right now is the perfect timing because they're filling that void of success. And because we've been doing good for the last two months, but all of a sudden, people started showing up two weeks ago, and I think it's that void that people are like, well – we got another team that's doing well right now also. So let's just pack that stadium during the summer. So I think it's awesome. And uh, I'm just I'm just worried about how difficult it's going to be to go to games now. What was the last time you saw the stadium like that, Francisco? Well, I went to the final of the World Baseball Classic. Um, oh, well, this, well this that, season, that's so. a different oh, story. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but for the Marlins specifically, yikes. I mean, it must have been like, gosh, I went. I had season tickets for, for the first season. Um and then uh, the second season, I think we went to opening day for the second season, the second home uh, op- home opener. And that was pretty full as well. Like, I think usually you just get them on opening days. Even this this season, we had like 31K for opening day, but that was mainly Mets fans. And yep. which, and that's that's la- funny to laugh at this season now. Oh, <laughs> but, so great. Um, oh, yeah. so great. Oh, my so God. I can't wait till they come back. With, uh, I, I'm, I'm waiting Steve for Cohen? the series when the Mets yeah. come back here. Yeah. <laughs> and 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 the ratio will be on the other side because oh, I don't sure. think Mets fans are going to be able to mentally handle that. No, Stevie so. Cohen ain't showing up for this one. <laughs> All that everyone except uh, oh. Marte because I love him. <laughs> Cali Stadium rocking. You with it? Yeah, man. It's it's great. Uh, I mean, as a person who doesn't have season tickets because it's hard to get to games sometimes. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to miss the $8 after fees and everything on, on the game time app to to get tickets. But, it, you know, it's worth it, man. It, it's a team that I think all of us that have followed the club since its inception, that we grew up walk, going to pro player, Joe Robbie, whatever, whatever name you attach to it, and seeing some very good baseball and some very bad baseball. Like, we want nothing more than for this team to be good again. We want nothing more for this team to get the attention you know, that it's receiving now, you know, so it's awesome. I mean, I personally don't remember it, man. I mean, I want to say even like the Stan Jose days, but even, but not, I don't think there was getting 25. I don't know. Jose starts. Jose starts. Jose Jose starts starts for serious. Stanton was going for fit for 60. And I went to, I went to pretty much every of the final home games when he was like right there at at 58 and 59. And, 
any other, I, I, and I would assume any other market would have packed the stadiums to see if he could hit six. Oh my god, right? Aaron Judge, every stadium he went to last year, Aaron Judge yeah. For, yeah. Yeah. visiting was team, but like there was just no buzz. Like, so, so it makes you think like they couldn't get buzz around that. And yeah. then, mm-hmm. you know, Jose was like the only one, and just because of his spirit, right? Yeah, and, and right. just how well he did, and he was just a phenomenon. But, but yeah, I think. I mean, the the most packed I, I remember it wasn't in the stadium. Um, I went to the 2003 World Series game, Game Four, the one where Alex Gonzalez hit up the walk off. I would that that was the, one of the only times, and I've been to a lot of big Dolphins games and Canes games there. That's the only time that I felt that stadium shaking when he did same, that. Same, um, but it's uh. Man, I, yeah, I, I don't, I don't remember like that. Consist like this stretch that we've had now with attendance. I have, I don't remember like even all, I we what was it last Monday or this Monday maybe? I think we had like eighteen or twenty thousand there or something like that. Yeah, That's insane. they have, they had. I, I tweeted it out. They had back to back crowds of twenty k against the Pirates. That is yeah. wild. The Pirates who have a losing record. And the last time they did that was and, in twenty twenty one, but they were facing and, the New York Yankees. And they don't travel well. Yeah, yeah, I mean, there's so plenty it, it of wasn't Pirates people fans. here, but like, but yeah, it wasn't. Yeah, the, the ratio that you see with like the Cubs or the Mets or the Yankees, right? Uh, and then Brenton, real quick, I, was, I guess I'll ask you, Brenton. I wasn't there for that D Gordon uh, leadoff home run after the Jose thing, but I would assume that that stadium that day was must have been insane after that first home run. Now, were you there by chance, Brenton? I wasn't there for that one, no, but um, <laughs> Francisco <laughs> okay. was. Yeah. But, you know, I, I, I don't remember. Um, I don't remember the stadium being this electric. Like, I, I can remember opening days where maybe we had more people in the stadium or we had 30,000 in the stadium, but people didn't care about every pitch. Like, they weren't invested like they are now. And I think what's even more impressive is that the Pittsburgh series – I think was Bally's highest rated series as far as people watching as well. So it's not just people going to the game. Like, listen, if I lived near the stadium, I'm in North Broward. Like it takes me two hours to get to a game and an hour and a half to get home. Like if I could, I would go to all the games I could, but you know, seeing people like me tuning into the game and actually watching it is exciting as well. But you know, I, I think you've nailed it on the head when you said, you know, it's people who are looking for a vacuum like the Marlins are actually good. Like who remembers the last time that happened where we were like talking about potentially being buyers at the deadline like that. Fuck, I don't remember when that happened, except for when we traded for Paul LaDuca, like way back when, <laughs> like. Tim, you know, give it's us, just give, good. give us Tim Anderson. Tim Anderson, we've been calling for Tim Anderson hey, for a while. That's my job to call for it. All right. <laughs> all right. So, um, I, right before we get into the the Pirates and Red Sox series, I, I did want to ask a general question, and I guess we can go around really quickly. I know I've been trying to be very optimistic so far this year, but how do you feel when people start bringing up 1997 and 2003? Now that we're 14 games over 500, are you still not trying to hear all that talk? Or you're like, F the playoffs. We have one of the best teams in baseball. Spaz, how are you feeling if I were to tell you we have one of the best teams in baseball? Could this mean something bigger? Uh, I, I wish I was as optimistic as you are, like in life in general. But I, <laughs> I kind of always think that the ship is sinking at any given moment. Uh and you just kind of have to like, like today, dude. T- I, I mean, not that I wasn't worried about today, really, but like people were just going crazy. Oh, it's the seventh inning. We haven't scored a run. Oh, the game, you know, everything's we over. We didn't get a hit in, oh, yeah, in there until yeah, the yeah, eighth yeah, inning. Yeah, like, there you go. I'm not going to lie. I was puckered up. I'm like, I swear to God, if we have to record yeah. and we get no hit on, I'm going to be pissed. <laughs> but we already have the series win. I mean, now we're just getting too ahead of ourselves. Like, if we have the series win, take that and go, especially at yeah, Boston. Well. Yeah, go home, bro. And I am the I am the pessimist. I think that everything is awful all the time. So <laughs> I, I I enjoy when people want to bring up 07 and 03 and hey, hey, we might do it. But man, there's there's teams that are like just there's on the field paper wise, just a lot better than we are. And uh, maybe we just got the guts, you know, a little something from the heat. We got the guts. Um, Just. 
just to be clear, right now, as it stands, the Marlins have the second best record in the National League. Who yeah. had that on their bingo card going into the season? Ooh, Not me. Boy. Ooh, boy. Mm-hmm. Good. Uh, All right. So uh, I, I know. I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Cali. <laughs> Let's get into it. All right. So Pirate Series, we beat, we won that Series 3-1, and then we swept the Red Sox. So as the general question goes, takeaways from the Pirate Series and the Red Sox Series, Cali. Bro, um. This is the we, – we talked about how the, the the schedule gets harder from here on out, right? Like, And you uh, scared me because you were right, kind of. <laughs> yes. But, um, dude, we're, we're, getting, we're getting hot at the right time. And now going into – we're on the road. We go to the Braves next. Um, we're hitting, man. We're, we're, we're smashing baseballs right now. The, the staff looks fantastic. Sandy looked good, which, which is something we've desperately missed. Man, I, I really don't have any complaints. We got we got Jazz back just smashing baseballs just right off the bat. Like, fuck, dude, let's do it, man. Arise, MLB starter, uh, MLB all-star starter for the National League. Don, like, I think he had the most votes in the National League, too, or some shit. Like, dude, we're fucking rolling. Let's keep going, baby. Brian, takeaways. Takeaways, man. Just living life to the fullest, man. Who I think I said we were going to win one game in Boston and we come out with a sweep. And I I love it. I know. I was just bitter because I was supposed to be there for all three games and things changed. Oh, there. (laughs) But listen, they're doing what they need to do. They're patting, they're padding the stats right now because. You know, July still isn't going to be easy, but no, I have a good buffer to go into into our hardest stretch. And July is really where this team is going to get forged into something strong. Like, uh, you know, you look at today's game and today's game was like a complete team effort. Like, I've never seen anything like that. Like, normally that error by Segura, that that would signal a meltdown. And um, I forget who was on the Tanner Scott, I think, was on the mound and he just shrugged it off and we went through it and got through it. And then, you know, jazz hitting his home runs and jazz coming back from this injury, you know, it's a small sample size, but I think what we're seeing is him going back to jazz the last year. You know, I think I said it before he got injured and he was being too patient at the plate. I didn't see him being as aggressive as he was the year before, you know, he was walking a little bit more and now I'm seeing him swing the bat a little more freely. And I think, you know, he's got some pressure off of him. Other guys are hitting on the team. He doesn't have to carry the team. He's doing good. And and who would have thought I would be the one saying this? And I hope you guys are sitting down. But Segura coming back has been, like, awesome. It kills me every so time. Kills me every time. Back. <laughs> I'll take and it. and I was the one in the beginning of the season, like, just, just DFA him. <laughs> Let's bring up Jacob Barry or some shit, you know. But the man's earned it. He's doing great defensively. He's doing really well with the bat as well. And, you know, I think Birdie drove him in to, for the, to take the lead in the eighth today. And, you know, it's just exciting to see. And I, I think, you know, the Brave series is really going to show us, you know, are we kind of for real or not? You know, I, I, I'm not looking for us to get a series win, but I'd like to see us be competitive where we weren't in that four-game series last time we played them. Uh, Francisco, uh, last two series, obviously we won. Uh, so over the last what, seven games, we are six and one. Uh, how are you feeling? What did you think of the, the, the last two series? I, I, and just real quick on Friday, puck blew a save, which was out of character, lost that game, but we had yeah, a chance to win that game. And the then game. Saturday, <laughs> there was another blown save, obviously ended up tying the game in the bottom of the ninth, went to extra innings and won. but those are two blown saves two days in a row so that was a little worrisome but obviously they picked it back up anything that you took away from these last two series yeah uh yeah i was i was at the game on friday um i've been to every ex- all except one of the throwback uh the, the flashback Florida friday's Martins. games yeah yeah I, I missed the one against the a's because i blew 1300 bucks for Stanley cup tickets for game three but um mm. be like that. Uh, be like they that. won that one though they won that one yeah. I, I got rid of my rats uh, but uh, <laughs> man, this this team doesn't quit. That's the beauty mm-hmm. of this one. They yep. don't they they're they don't care if they're down in the ninth 
with two outs, they're going to find a way to grind. Uh, and, you know, all the one run victories. And 19 they had and five. A, yeah, they, they had a ton of them last season. If you guys go back and look, they had a ton of one run losses last season. Yeah. And I was I always thought like, well, a lot of one run losses. Those games are and against some some very good teams as well. And it's just like, you know, if you can flip at least half of those into victories, okay, then you're looking at something, right? And and they've done way more than that, more than flipping half of those. They they've done a fantastic job finding ways to come back. It always felt like they're down two runs in the sixth inning and just like, Oh, it's over. Well, Oh, oh they're, they're never coming back from this. There's no way they don't have the, they don't have the bats for it. And it's so like, even if the, the bullpen is lights out or the starters lights out, it just felt like a two run lead was like, all right, this game's over. Yeah. And now they've proven that they can overcome these, these uh, like two, two run leads, three run leads, right? Four run leads. They uh, uh, bullpen has been able to hold it down. Starters are, are getting into the, to the sixth, seventh innings now uh, consistently. Like it, things are are clicking, and they're getting they're getting guys to step up, right? You know, Gene Segura's looking at it, he's just like, I don't want to be like Avi. I, I want to contribute to this team, right? Yeah, yeah, so sure. I don't want to be selling out Epas over in left field. So yeah, like, that guy's <laughs> even on the team. So like, and I, hope we I, never I, see I him try again. not to make fun of players, but man, Avi Sayel, you. You just have not made it easy for me <laughs> at all. Uh, you're just up there with Wei and Chen and Heath Bell right now. Oh my God! But- <laughs> <laughs> Holy it's shit! Bad, Those are some name drops. Yeah. So like, um, it, they 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 just don't quit. They're just they're eating it, off it, whatever energy the Panthers and Heat had as well. Yeah. They're, yeah, man. The South Lord is rolling right down. now. And, um, and so. The, the team has, has, has done just way better. Just this Red Sox series, you could see it. Now you have this infusion. Sandy getting it back together, that's huge. It's massive, massive, mm-hmm. massive, massive. Um, I said he was like Sergei Bobrovsky. Like, he'll, he'll, he'll come back when it matters, and it's he's coming back. And then Jazz. Like, they needed a, a bat. Like, yep. just like oh, where, where are we going to get a bat? Oh, they got him back right now. And and mind you, you saw him just racing around the bases. He still needs surgery yeah. after the season. Yeah. And that's what he's doing without the surgery. Like, imagine when he's fully recovered next season, right? And um, you know, my sources say that jazz isn't a problem in that locker room, in that clubhouse at all. If if, if I mean, I, I, I might not that, have the right Samson? sources to talk about that, you know. But I, I, it just seems like jazz chisholm is in the future he was he's been around the clubhouse he hasn't been injured and sitting in the press box he's been in the in in the dugout he's been in the dugout with the team through this process so it's like he's interacting with them it's not like you know but you know my sources could be wrong you know jeremy well, Tache's not, sources could not. also be wrong you know uh, but i don't know man he's he's hit a couple home runs he's doing i mean he hit the home run today he thought he didn't get any of that he thought yeah. it was a fly out to center field you look bad yeah so uh, i mean they're there and it's just like okay this is good now we got we got the braves coming up i'm 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 tentatively like okay i'll i'd be i'm like thinking all right if they lose the series it's okay it's fine it it is but i don't know if you guys have played metal gear solid three yeah snake eater yeah but it just feels like (laughs) You know, every time you saw the boss, it's just like, man, she's just way better than 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 Snake right now. Like every time she just owned you, it just seemed like. But it seemed like he was getting closer and closer to kind of finally being able to come, go up against. It just kind of feels like that. We faced the Braves earlier in the season. Uh, run differential took a massive hit, uh, but there was that one game. Remember that they had the comeback, right? And. Yeah. That, that, that's the seeds of the season of the comeback kids, the, the, the comeback, ah, oh gosh, there's a Kajirians. That's, that's one of the, one of the genus terms for, for a Marlin. <laughs> so like, that's the term that I'm trying to use, but nobody, it's not catching on at all, but um, like, that's a big ass here, but <laughs> <laughs> it starts with a K too, but anyways, they, but that's the seeds of it. It's like, you, you saw a little bit of the fire in this Marlins team, their ability to come back uh, much like the 97 team. We also had a penchant for comebacks. So it's like, okay, 
if the Portland's can take, if they take one and it's a convincing victory, it'd be like, okay, I'd be good with that, right? If they win the series and take two, all right, okay, we can we can stand toe to toe with Atlanta. Since we'll see, if they get swept and it's just like, oh, okay, let's just get the hell out of there. <laughs> but, well, let, yeah. let's hope that things go a lot better this weekend. Um, but look, over the last two series, I feel like, like you said, they showed a lot of fight. And I think one of the biggest things, like you brought up, Francisco, and like Spaz like to call him, El Caballo finally showed up for a full game, right? He didn't have any inning where he just left it up four or five runs. So how are you feeling about El Caballo, as you like to call him, Spaz? Um, he, I mean, you guys know, I, I felt really, I, I know Branton and I went back about this. I did make a joke on Twitter about it and he wasn't happy about it. <laughs> but, yeah. he, man, listen, he, he, he did his thing and went, he, what, he went seven innings the last one. Uh, he went seven innings and we got the one W mm -hmm. seven. Yeah. What well, one run. Uh, he had like six hits, whatever, dude, but that's what we need. That's what we need from Sandy. And if we do that. I am 100% because Sandy, he pitched on what last Friday? Uh, uh, he pitched. No, I pitched on this week. A couple Tuesday? Days oh, yeah. There yeah. you go. Yeah, yeah. Dude, I that's all I want him to do. Go seven. That's the best thing about him. He, he can go the distance. And if he does that and allows one run, I'm fucking happy. Our guys, our bats, especially now that Jazz is going to be back, which outstanding. How excited was everyone when Sandy? Slit, went past third and slid into uh, home uh, on that. What was that? That was game two, uh, Boston, right? Or game one at Boston? Jazz. Was, uh, yeah, game two. one. Yeah, game one, game Jazz. One, yeah, when he was just Game flying. one, Boston. How excited, <laughs> yeah, how excited was everyone about that? So if we get Sandy back to just doing that, just going the distance, and, you know, hopefully we don't have to get into much of the bullpen and all that, that's all we want, man. And I am super excited about it. Um, I apologize for any joke that I may have made at one point. Just you know, <laughs> Good. <laughs> you know uh, I love him. Come on, you know I love him. But yeah, no, he, he doesn't him. know. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know. Um, so like we said, we've been doing well all year long without what we would consider before the season our best two players, right? Sandy and Jazz. So 14 years over 100 without their necessarily regular contributions. If they start contributing regularly like they're supposed to, this team can be very, very scary. But We've been going back and forth this year about where Jazz should bat in the lineup. I hated him at leadoff. I always thought Arias should be at leadoff. He's finally back. He's batting cleanup. Not necessarily what I wanted, but, I mean, so far we swept the Red Sox, so it's working. Callie, how are you feeling about Jazz coming back and batting cleanup? Um, I mean, I, I, I know I was kind of one of the proponents for, for having him at leadoff. Mm -hmm. Um, but that's why Skip get, gets paid the big bucks. He knows a little better than I do. Um, and he's very handsome. So handsome. Super Great. handsome. Super oh, yeah. handsome. <laughs> Great. Perfect rugged beard. The tattoos does it all. For yeah, you, man. man. Yeah, and best, best manager uniform in the game. Yes. Yeah, yes. Man. That I shirt. Drippy. <laughs> I want a Skip Schumacher dugout shirt with his number on the sleeve and his name. Mm-hmm. Put it on the website and I'll buy it right now. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but man, Jazz Jazz is the face of this franchise. We if Jazz yeah. goes every, you know, well we we've talked about it. Jazz is gonna uh, not only is he the face of this franchise, he's 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 a leader. He's 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 the guy, right? So we go as far as he goes, and uh, it's really encouraging that we were playing great without him, and the fact that he came back and and we haven't missed a beat, and you know, to go to Boston, which is always a tough place to go to. And do what we did to them. I mean, with Jazz performing the way he has since he's come back, that's super encouraging, man. Um, but, bro, I don't care if he's batting first, fourth, seventh. I don't give a shit, man. Keep swinging the bat the way you're doing. Just let's fucking go, man. Like, um, I'm, I'm being very cautious because I have a lot of trauma as a Marlins fan. Um, just as, as all of us do. Three decades of, yeah. of absolute. Not me. <laughs> three decades of, of having my heart ripped out of my chest and, and celebrating in big ways too. So I'm, I'm still very cautious about my expectations. Um, I catch myself watching games and being like, man, this is the year we can make a fucking run. But it's also like, no, I've, I've been here before. I've, I'm going to tame my expectations too. So 
very small sample size for Jazz, obviously, three games this series. But in this series, he had five hits. He's batting 417, uh, two home runs, five RBIs. Uh, it's uh, he's 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 he performed like the jazz that we want and need. Uh, also, you, real real quick, fun fact the Marlins. I remember we were talking about their run differential being bad earlier in the year. It is officially back at zero. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That is breaking even, stuff. breaking even in the <laughs> oh, run differential game right now. Yes, there we go. Because that was a big talking point at the beginning of the season. Yeah, hey, good stuff, Kali. I like that. There we go. Warren sustainable if our run differential was going to remain that way, but no, that well, that happens no, when you the math is mathing right now, man. The yeah. math is mathing right. Francisco, how are we feeling mm. about Jazz batting cleanoff? You good with that? I mean, for I mean, for now, we'll, we'll see how he slots in the lineup. So let's just start. I mean, it's gone well so far, right? So yeah, I'm no reason to mess with success at this point. Uh, we'll see what Skip does with the lineups against Atlanta, but I, I, I don't think he would want to shake things up right now. Um, we'll see how Coop is. He was out sick today. And then, of course, Yuli had that freak accident um, as well. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, but as far as Jazz, yeah, just leave him where he's at. Let's see what happens. And because I, I don't really – I don't really like when managers move players from slots too much. Like, I think it's just way, it, it kind of messes with working. their minds. It messes with their approach. It, it's, they, they don't know where they're at in the lineup and, and just the, the, the slot that you're in kind of, it does dictate how you, you approach certain situations, the situations that you'll face. So yeah, you, Luis arise, get on base, boom. And then we'll have Jazz or somebody bring him in, Jazz or Soleil or one of those two guys, bring yeah. him in, and and try and set, you know, table setters, man. You know, oh three table setters. You know, it was nice having Juan Pierre and Luis Castillo to get on base. You know, and, and then having Pudge drive him in or, or Mike Mike Law or Derek Lee, right? So, yep. uh, just Derek, let's not yeah, mess with anything right now. I think he's, you know, he's made. Hopefully he worked on some uh, on his game. His, his swing looks looked fantastic. He, he, it was basically like almost a carbon copy of 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 Ken Griffey Jr.'s follow through. There was like a a, a very well uh, taken picture of it uh, in this series. It was like, ooh, that looks like the silhouette of uh, yeah. Ken Griffey Jr. that he actually does have tattooed on his arm. So I'm like, oh, okay, all right, maybe this is the the start of something as well um he's fresh that's another thing with him coming in he's also fresh yep. uh, so we're getting him with with uh, a couple months of just like okay he's got fresh legs he's got fresh bat he's got fresh like, eyes he's he's just seeing things a lot better and you could tell he had uh, fresh legs while he was running those bases this week yeah, yeah. I, once again he still needs surgery i'm like that's insane yeah, yeah that was wild yeah <laughs> Yo, i did uh, did want to touch on something real quick sorry Dan. oh sorry sorry oh, because uh, Francisco mentioned something about the illness, uh, should we cons should we be concerned that uh, Cooper constantly has like a random illness? Ah, has anybody I, picked it up on that? I, I don't know what the illness C, is. I mean, maybe. Well, he had an inner ear of infection earlier in the season. Is that that's what, it what was? was? That's why he was out because it was thrown off his balance, Yikes. and okay. so he wasn't able to swing the bat. So I, I don't think it's the same thing. No, I, have little I don't. Kids, because my little listen. kids, I got kids, and they have me sick all the time. They're like little terrorists. <laughs> Maybe that's what it is. I don't know. But I feel like Coop is just constantly has like a thing. It's like uh, illness. Cooper out illness. I'm like, all right, whatever. I, I don't know if anybody else picked it up, but anyway, that was my thing. Uh, that's what you interrupted me for. Sorry, dog. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, Brent. We were going back and forth about Yuri Perez last week. He's slated to start on Saturday. Mm -hmm. He has, at the moment, we were talking about the innings pitched. In yep. 21, he pitched 78 innings the whole year. 22, last year, 77 innings. This year, he's already at 78 innings. And again, yeah. slated to start on Saturday against the Braves. Obviously, he's, he's balling right now. Do you yeah. think that he's going to keep this going and we're just going to have to shut him down in September for the rest of the year, kind of like Strasburg in 2012? He's not going to make it to September before we shut him down, in my opinion. I think um, 
I think what's kind of delayed the Marlins' plans has been uh, Cabrera's injury. I think that delayed a little bit, and Trevor Rogers' setback, I think, has really kind of delayed what they want to do with him because I think, I think, I think their plan was probably right after the All Star break to shut him down. Um, and and now I don't think they can do that. So I think he probably goes through July, and then maybe gets shut down for August, September, and. You know, that may be all we see of him. And, you know, it sucks because he's our best pitcher in the rotation right now, right? For sure. But, you know, you you have to think long-term with Yuri. Like, the kid, he's a kid. Like, when we were his age, like, we were out, like, doing stupid shit. We weren't, like, trying to play. We weren't meaningful, the right? baseball right now, arguably, you know? So... I, I think it's the right thing to do. He has, he's never pitched as many innings as he has, um, as he will have through his next start. So, you know, I, I think while we can, we all need to get out there, see the kids start, get addicted, because the kid's going to be here for a while. And he's going to be so good, you know, but it's baby steps, right? And, it, it's a good problem to have that we have some talent in the system that can can take, and we essentially have probably six, seven guys who could start in our rotation when you when you have a healthy Rogers, and then that's as like long as, as, long as, as long as one of them isn't Cueto, I'm happy. Oh, yeah, Cueto's not. Cueto, Cueto's not saying the, the, no the, way. The, if no Cueto way, comes not. up. If Cueto comes up to replace Yuri, it'll be the biggest disappointment since the fire sale after the 0-3. Oh, <laughs> like, no. Like, no. He uh, has, however, given us the best clip <sighs> of Marlins going the for video tripping. footage the whole yeah. season of him trying to cover first base and falling over. I kind of feel bad for him. I mean, he didn't have a horrible career. Like, that's, what, what a rough way to end. He should have just left. I mean, he had a, a pretty good season last season with the White Sox. And um, yeah, why wouldn't he want to let's let's do it again. Let's see what happens in Miami. It's just every, you know, players around that age can legitimately drop off like that. It, it's happened so many times before. It's just, uh, just I wouldn't have taken it. I don't I don't like taking flyers on those really, really old pitchers. But you know who oh, I would man. take a flyer on? Bartolo Colon. I don't care if he's 67. I'd, I'd oh, bring Bartolo Colon in. Plus, he'll bring in the crowd. Like, I, I yeah, honestly, man. Yeah. I would th- I'd take a flyer on Bartolo Colon. Let's go. Over Cueto, uh, yes. <laughs> Cali, what's going on with uh, Yuri? You think that we shut him down? or So, what, oh, not, not what if. When do you think we shut him down? So, sources tell me. Ooh. All right. I got sources. I got sources, though. He's going to be put on a very hard cap very soon in terms of pitching. And I would be genuinely shocked if they don't shut him out before the season ends. No matter how our season's looking, I would not be surprised if they shut him down before the season ends. I would say, like, August, like August I think he's he's done at that some sucks. point. Shut him time. down. Shut him down now and then bring him back mid September if we're going to shut mm-hmm. him down. I, that, you that have to. You, to think. you have to. You also have to remember Major League Baseball rules are kind of are a little strange when it comes to like player options and stuff like that, and going up and down from the minors. So they may exercise some of that at some point, um, in terms of service time and all that stuff. So, um, yeah. So we'll see. But one thing that is for certain, sooner rather than later, we're going to see Yuri put in a hard pitch cap of probably less than 100 pitches. Oh well, yeah, that that I could def- definitely see. Yeah. Uh, so, but he's been very excited, and he's been very good. He, I thought he was going to go down when when Rogers was back, but Rogers obviously hasn't been able to come back. Um, I thought he was the odd man out just because of his age, but he, since he's come up, he's been the best pitcher in our rotation, hands down. Yeah, and I still, I still die on the hill that Braxton Garrett has been our most consistent pitcher this year, but. You take oh, out that one bad Brax start, and Brax is in the conversation. The one that he got shellacked for 11 runs against the Braves. Yeah. That we were all at. Yep. Yeah, yeah we were there. Yeah. All right. Well, a- another player that is balling, obviously, outside of Yuri, the most obvious, Luis Arise, all star. But, Callie, you were telling me we need to tell people to go out and vote. Voting's yes. closed. 
Pretty oh, close. so pretty close. Yeah. Oh, close well, today. A touch great. late, but uh, uh, there you go. Arise officially got named <laughs> as the starting second baseman for the National League. So there we are. Oh, sorry, Albies. Well, fuck that guy. Uh, well, <laughs> Arise is, is starting second base, and we got some uh, future stars. Now, Callie, help me pronounce this because I know I'm going to mess it up. Monteverde uh-huh. and Nunez in the Futures game. What are we thinking about our two future stars that, I mean, I hope we can see at some point in the majors. Yeah. Um, if, if you've been paying attention to the show, I've been, I've been banging the table for Monteverde to get a chance with the, with the big club. Um, yep. 25. He's been probably the best pitcher in our minor league organization. This he had year. better stats than Yuri at Pensacola yeah. when Yuri got called up and he's yeah. still balling out. Yeah, Monteverde has been absolutely incredible. Uh, Nasir Nunez is, is a kid that he he's a first round draft pick, a high school kid. Um, he was a little slow to get the bat started in his career, but now I want to say he's on year three, and he's really starting to pick it up. and And being called up to the futures game is is massive um, for him and for us. So, I it, it's great. Um, if, if you guys haven't watched the Futures game before, I highly recommend it. There's a lot of fun pro, uh, prospects out there to watch. Um, you know, Harry Ford, Jackson, Jackson Holiday is an absolute machine. Kevin York, uh, Drew Gilbert, you know, there, there's, there's a lot of guys there that are a lot of fun to watch that uh, you, need to, you need to focus your eyes on and, and be ready because these guys are the, the future of the game. Uh, Francisco, do you keep up with the minors? No, no, absolutely. I, okay. I can't be bothered. I really can't. I, <laughs> I, 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 I can't be bothered with prospects in any sport that I follow. Um, this guy's just like me. What the with, fuck? With, with the AHL, <laughs> with the Panthers, like, or, or, or guys who are in the major juniors or, or in college hockey, I, I can't. And, and the same thing, like the G League and stuff like that, even though it's not as big, but with the Heat, it is because they seem to find gold from there uh but with the marlins the same thing I, I can't be bothered with the prospects we've seen enough prospects come through i don't know how fish on the farm does it i really don't know how he does it like that is that is a, a, a an undertaking for sure to keep up with just the farms but some people really do love the passion within the minor leagues and seeing guys come up and seeing uh the journey of players from like when they're like 18 years old and whatever and then all and they finally make the big leagues and stuff like that like I, I you know it's commendable it's nice but i mean i was burned with jeremy hermina a long time ago like oh this guy's gonna be great whatever he hits a grand slam and like just fizzles out complete bust like and i and i've i've never followed prospects ever since i'm like just no 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 more of this i was at that game cameron maven like he's great like whatever, he's gonna replace miggy and and you know it's like nope same thing what happened about, like i, I what just, about peyton burdick this year so I can't no well, I can't be bothered. They need get to the big club, get to the big club, and then I'll I'll put your little happy birthday thing when it's your birthday and stuff like that and all that stuff and to get me a World Series ring. Try and get one. Of, oh gosh darn it, this thing you can't see it with the green screen. When you're wearing this Florida Marlins logo on your head, that's when I'll start caring about you. Uh. Ooh, I, you know what? Yeah, I, 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 more often. I love this guy. Man. <laughs> well, Branton is a minor leagues aficionado. I love, so I, yeah, love yeah. I like the no, I love I, I love the hats. So much and the, yes, the, the and minor leagues like that. That's the great, best hats, fantastic. For sure. uh, Look at this right at my disposal. Thing stuff, but man, jumbo yeah. shrimp. Yep. Brent, I'm convinced. I'm, I'm convinced I love that you have... all our teams are like it's Jupiter, Pensacola, and, and Jacksonville. I love the the proximity and stuff like that. Like I, I but whoa, I just can't whoa. be bothered following. Like no love for Beloit. Beloit oh, Beloit's Wisconsin. fine. They're up there Come in Wisconsin, on, very far away. But you know, <laughs> I thought they would go with like an actual fish, right, to keep with the whole theme of like nautical creatures. Well, there's no good fish in Wisconsin, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, some sky carp. So the the fish in the sky. <laughs> Yeah, they tried. It's the goose that doesn't migrate. Fun yeah. fact: that's yeah. the goose oh, that's left know. over on the frozen pond. That, that they call them the sky wild. carp because to eat, they shoot down into the lake in the winter. I love the logos; it's great, that's and a, I, and they have the color scheme. Camera. I like that the color schemes are consistent as well. Yeah, no. I love it. But yeah, so I'm a I, sucker for minor leaguers. And how are you feeling about Monteverde and Nunez? 
Listen, Monteverde, my dream would be if Yuri goes down, Monteverde gets a shot to replace him. I think he's got he's got the makings of a minor leaguer, like I said, or a major leaguer, I'm sorry. Um, like I said, he had the better he had better stats than Yuri at Pensacola, and that's saying something because Yuri was lights out, but Monteverde was just a step better. And, you know, Monteverde's older than Yuri, um, early twenties, so I th- I think he's twenty three. He's 25. Uh, 25? Well, even older. So he's built but, up more. He's a, right, and I know. think it's like he's had heavy pitch counts. He's had a lot of innings under his belt. And, you know, I, I, I really think that he's a guy who deserves a shot because at 25, like, you, it's time to know if this is a guy you want to hold on to or if this is a guy that, you know, maybe isn't isn't for you. So um, I'm excited for him. Nunez, I'm excited uh excited for him too because he's another guy like Cali said came on a little bit late in his career um but has done some really great things and and maybe somebody we see on a major league roster i'm not completely sold on him yet but um we'll see maybe he'll go somewhere else and have hit for the cycle or something like like our boy did last night <laughs> so uh, tonight uh against montgomery shout out the biscuits uh Patrick Monteverde, seven innings pitch, four hits, one run, zero earned run, five oh. strikeouts. Leading double A with a 193 ERA, leading double A with a seven uh, with 74.2 innings pitched, league leading eighth win. Yeah. Oof. Well, it, it makes me feel a little better that if Yuri goes down, we might have a replacement for him, which which is great. So Let's get on to the upcoming series. So we got two series coming up. We have obviously the biggest series of the week is the Braves. Unfortunately, it isn't here at home. It's in Atlanta. And then we have the Cardinals at home. The Cardinals are not doing great. So I guess I'll start off with the predictions real quick. Uh, The Braves series, like Brian uh, suggested earlier, you're not looking for a sweep. You're not even necessarily looking for a series win, even though that's the goal. As long as you look competitive, right? Because they they gave it to us last time. So I'm going to say we could take at least one of these three. So I'd say we go one and three against them. And then against the uh, Cardinals, we have a – is it a three-game or four-game series? It's It's a a four-game series. I was going to say three game sweep, but since it's four games, it's tough to sweep a four game series. I'll say we go three and one. So three and one and one and two. So I'm saying four and three in the next seven games, which I mean, at that point, we're looking at 52 and 37, which is 15 games over 500. Looking good. God. Looking good. Uh, let it. me go over to the, the constant optimist, <laughs> Spaz. <laughs> That's not How me. you feeling? I know. Uh, so funny enough, I have a couple of buddies that live in Atlanta and they're going, I have one going tomorrow. I have one going on Saturday and apparently they're expecting sellouts for this game, uh, for the, for the series. Uh, well, people you know, are taking a serious team now. has finally come to yeah. town. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Serious. Daddy's coming home. So, <laughs> uh, dude, if, if I, and, and I'm being a realist here, if I walk away, uh, one and two, I'm okay with that. I, yeah, would me too. The sh- I would love to beat the shit out of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think I've told you guys before, before the Marlins, I was, uh, I love the Braves. I mean, uh, yeah. Maddox. Boo! Mo- Maddox. Same. Mo- seven, bro. They were on TBS pretty much every night. So yeah. there you go. I got you, Cali. I got you. Thank you. So get out of here. Listen, Lavin, Smoltz, Maddox, those guys were amazing. Uh, and on TBS. So yeah, dude, like, uh, obviously, I'm a hardcore uh, Marlins fan, but if I walk away one and two, one and three, that's fine. Uh, I don't think. Also, I I hope this guy does not start some bullshit with his crybaby. Uh, you know, oh, you threw inside because that's where I can't hit bullshit. So oh, I hope you mean that, the fake ass MVP. Yes, Acuna. Yep. Yes, I hope Acuna doesn't start shit. But Acuna whatever. Acuna will be the worst player this series. Yes, well, and Arise hope- is gonna shine. No, I, I honestly think that. They start talking about MVP talk, and when they compare both, that's going to be the conversation. Nobody, Sorry, uh, nobody looks at the World Baseball Classic because Arias played better in that than Acuna did as well. Oh, yep. So. Yes, please. I hope they bring that up, but they won't. And then mm-hmm. against the Cardinals, uh, four game think, series at home. 
Yeah, they got the shit kicked out of them by the Astros 13 or 14 to 0 today. And they are probably like they're 10 or something they're, under under 500. They're 13 games under 500. Yeah. Um I'm going to go ahead and say three and one because yep. the fucking Pirates came to town and they were like on an eight game losing streak and we lost the first game. Uh, so I'll, I'll say three and one against the, against the Cardinals. And I'll, if I take one out of Atlanta, you know, fuck so it. Maybe, you're going four and three like me. Okay. Yeah. And so we're playing the safe. Ozuna, we're playing the safe. Yeah. Maybe Ozuna throws us the bone and like you're here remembers he was from Miami, you know, <laughs> Cali predictions. All right. So. You know, I like to look at the numbers. All right, so the the Braves are the best hitting team in baseball. Um, no denying it. You know, fuck, fuck Acuna. You know, fuck the Braves. I hate the Braves um, almost as much as I hate the New York Mets. But you know, a lot of a lot of Marlins killers on the Braves too. They they've just had our number on all year. But that changes. All right, Marlins take two in Atlanta. Ooh, take three okay. against the Cardinals. Five and two, and I'm I'm usually the optimist, but just a couple numbers. Um, uh, Cardinals pretty decent at hitting. They're right in the middle of the pack in terms of average. They're seventh uh, in the league in home runs as a club. Uh, pitching, they're really bad. All right, they have the six worst uh, ERA. They have a four five eight ERA as a pitching staff. All right, and then with the and then they have the third worst WHIP. In baseball, and the second um, highest average against in baseball. So, um, loving our loving our chances. Where you know, at, especially at home, we're a team that likes to hit at home. Uh, we've been hitting the baseball really well. Um, I think it's gonna be an exciting to an exciting a fun two series for us to watch. Um, the Cardinals, as bad as they've been playing, you know, you know, they're a team that they can turn things around real quick. There, there's talent. Uh, there's talent in that lineup. Pitching hasn't been very good, but you know, I still think we take three, take two against the Braves, five and two. Fucking give it to me. I, I, I love it. I love it. Now uh, I'm looking and I, I see that the Braves have a 3.74 ERA, um, fifth best in the league. Yes. Yeah, they're very good. They're very good. I don't give a fuck. We're gonna tear, tear them up. F them. Fuck those guys. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> All right. Um Brighton predictions. Callie, Callie and I are drinking the same Kool Aid, man. I, Ooh, think. I love it. With the Braves, I think we lose the we lose tomorrow. Hoeing going, I, I don't see us winning that game. Oh, but those going. bullpen yeah. days haven't been bad. They haven't, but we haven't played against the Braves. You are hundred percent correct. So, you know, I think we win Saturday and Sunday because we got Yuri and we got uh, Sandy going. Mm-hmm. Sandy pitched very well against the Braves the last time out. I, I'm, you know, I think he got the win there, so that'll be great. And I think we take three out of four from the Cardinals, and you know, we're we're so sitting pretty five and two, five and last two, series. five, five and two, two like yeah, so fifty three and thirty six. Mm-hmm. Uh, let me not even get ahead of myself. And then to our special guest, let's end it with you, Mister Marlins historian. Okay, so. Once again, the Atlanta series, I, I I would think one and two at this point. Uh, it's a very hard series. Uh, we just saw the Cincinnati Reds who are having their own renaissance right now, uh, and they went one and two against Atlanta in a uh, hard-fought series that, that first game. I mean, probably the best regular season game thus far uh, in 2023. It was great. It was fantastic. It was theater and everything. Uh, but uh, the Braves came back and kind of, you know, reestablish themselves like we are the kings of the of the National League right now. Uh, but I think the Marlins will be the same. But I think once again, I think there's a, that one victory will be a statement victory. Uh, and I'm hoping that the other two games are close because it'll give the Marlins like they'll finally have like a feel for Atlanta. They'll, ha- they'll, they'll have a feel for what where they because it's been a while since we last faced them. Right. That was back in April. Yep. So it's, this is a completely different team. At this point, mm-hmm. so we're going to see if they somehow if they would they take two of the three. All right, then we're talking, but I still think it's I'm gonna keep it at one. But I'm gonna get I'm gonna a little cocky here. I'm gonna say a four game sweep of the St. Louis Cardinals. Ooh, Ooh. I love that. Now, these two series are show me series, right? I like but the that. Atlanta one. It's like we're show me where we're at, where we are in comparison to that one team that's ahead of us that we know 
if we're going to get anywhere, we have to beat them. Just like the 97 team. They they knew that that was the one team that they had to be, and they did a very good job in the regular season of beating Atlanta. So what happened in the NLCS was no surprise. It shouldn't have been a surprise to nobody. But uh, we'll see how this team responds. But the St. Louis Cardinals, Marlins have shared their spring training facility with the Cardinals for a long time, and that's been a model franchise on, on the other side, right? Just walking right on the other side of the, of, of the, of the facilities, right there on the other side of the outfield, right? Cardinals doing everything right, keeping their players Yachty and Wainwright, Pujols coming back, hit 700, like just everything you want, the World Series 2011, 2006, like, like just model franchise, everything you want. And the Marlins get Skip. Skip infusing the Cardinals, the old culture of the Cardinals. Yeah. The Cardinals have been losing that culture to the Astros and now to the Marlins, right? And so the Marlins just been sitting there like, man, they got everything on the other side, man. But now this is the show me series. This is where the Marlins will be like, you know what, St. Louis? We're the top dogs out here in Jupiter now. All right. Next season, we'll be we'll be the big dogs in Jupiter. So I love I the optimism games, here. I want a four game sweep of the St. Louis Cardinals <laughs> in South Florida. So I'm calling my brother in law is a, is a Cardinals fan. So I hope he listens to this. But I, I can't wait for teams to start picking the carcass of the St. Louis Cardinals during for the during the trade. Jesus. Because I know the Central teams are loving it right now. Uh, but uh, as a Marlins fan, it's just like you just look at them with envy when you go to the spring training facility. You're like, man, they've got everything. They got the history, they got the players sticking around, they have the yep. front office, and it's like, oh, we can do this now. We've only had like one season where we where, where we could like say that to them, and that was 03. I, I'm excited about it, so I'm, I'm hoping that yeah, the Marlins stomp the faces of the Cardinals. Well, um, so historic in Francisco's a historian, five and two, Cali five and two, Brighton five and two, Spaz and I four and three, regardless, sticking over 500. And you know, if if we were to go 500 the rest of the year, we would end up. 88 and 74. So, I mean, 88 wins sounds like a playoff team to me. So, 500 baseball gets you in there. That sounds great. And, um, I mean, I, I'm glad that everybody's starting to be a little more optimistic as uh, the season gets closer to the All Star break. All right. So, we would like to thank you, historian Francisco, for joining us, taking the time. It's been really fun. And, um, let everybody know, even though if they're listening to this, they probably already follow you, but let everybody know they where they better can find be. you. Yeah, yeah I, would, I would hope so. <laughs> so where can they uh, find you? All right. So, yeah, uh, at Marlins History on Twitter. That's where I do most of my stuff. It's at Marlins.History on Instagram, and I post there occasionally. And I do have Tech Talk that's also at Marlins History. So how do you do, fellow kids, uh, over there? <laughs> um, uh, so, yeah, that's where I do most of my stuff. I do have a merch store as uh, – you know, we, we have our model there. There it is. Right the for, for those watching yeah. on YouTube. Yeah, I've got, I mean, my favorite design so far is the one of the clock uh, from the Teal Monster with the exact time of the of Edgar Enteria's hit in 1997. So that one's my favorite one. And, oh, oh, dude. So I was like, because you mentioned this earlier for, for the pro player stand replica. There's one at 60 bucks on eBay right now. Uh, I'm, I'm in a bidding that. war. I don't want oh, to say how much it is right now. Right now? Is that <laughs> no, okay. a different one. See, I, see, I found looking, a cheaper one. <laughs> don't worry. Don't worry, at, Brett. And this isn't live. This isn't live. <laughs> I'm looking Listen, at, it's got three days left on it, and I'm the oh. winning bid at like 30 uh, bucks, Jeff, what, so, what are some keywords I can look for on, on eBay for this right now? I just put pro Go F yourself. <laughs> That's what you can search. <laughs> if, if, it, if I see it less than $60, I won't bid on it, Brand. Don't worry. <laughs> First, damn, this guy's crazy charging 200 bucks for this, man. Yeah, it's insane. It, it, it's it's insane. Insane. I see which one you're bidding on, Brand. Don't worry. I'm not, I won't do it. I won't do no, it. No, no, no. You should have two people <laughs> bidding on it so that one of you, like, you can get it from as like a gift. Like, hey, dude, I got it for you. You know, you can have there two you people. Go going in on it that There's way you're short it 700 that the is the problem is is callie and i love the exact same sports teams yeah. like all the no, way down the line soccer baseball football everything except and so football. well yeah coogs all the way baby but we have to like coordinate 
Hey, mm. I'm going after this. Are you in on this? Are you in on this <laughs> Liverpool card? Are you going in on this this uh, inner Miami thing? Because yeah. we have, like, I bid on something, and then he's like, "Oh, dude, I just found this," and I, I just put in like a twenty dollar bid. I'm like, "You jackass! That was me!" <laughs> like, That's scroll funny. up where I tell you I'm bidding yeah, on so, this. So we have to like text each other. Like, was this you? No. Okay, I'm. I'm I called dibs on this one. Like, <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah. So. Uh, Brenton, anything for the people on the way out? Listen, as much as I miss my $2 tickets and standing at the Budweiser bar with my boys, get out to the ballpark for this last homestand before we go into the All-Star break. The Marlins have never been this good going into the All-Star break. Get in there, take it in, get addicted, and be there every week. Uh, That's I, all I, I agree. Got. Spaz. Yeah, I think it's going to get a little more crowded where you like to watch the games, but you're okay with that. Anything else for the people? Uh, no, man. Uh, follow our, our guest, uh, Martin's History. He's a, one of my favorite follows. Uh, go out to the ballpark. I will. Unfortunately, I cannot be there for uh, the series coming up. I'm, I'm out of town. So I will be raffling off my tickets on the uh, on our, on our uh, Twitter account. So okay. follow us, and I'll be raffling them off. Uh, you can either sit in my seats, which is above the bullpen, or you can stand at the Budweiser bar like I do and uh, drink beer and watch the boys. So, yeah, uh, go out to the ballpark, man. Support the boys. Sounds good. Cali. All right. Uh, so just a couple things. Just uh, next week, I'll be going out of town. I'll be in Washington, D.C. Um, so I just want to say another public reminder to Spazzy to get me the fucking Chuck Car bubble head. Because if you don't, I'm going to burn your house down. I got um, it. I told you. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, just to kind of echo everybody, get to the ballpark, be out there, be, you know, fun, very fun time to be watching baseball. Not a whole lot of uh, distractions uh, elsewhere. So it's a great time. And then my last thing is I want to ask Francisco a question because I feel like it's worth asking the historian. Who's your favorite Marlin of all time? Ooh, great question. Ooh, good point. Yeah. No, this is like every single – one of the O three players was were like my heroes because I was that. like yeah. I became a fan in nineteen ninety eight. Okay, right? probably the worst oh. time to be a fan, but <laughs> yeah, I was no coming shit. to baseball right, and you know the home run race got me. I was like I was Sammy Sosa guy uh, when the home run race was happening. It was on you know Cubs were playing WGN was like national, so you just come in. You know it's like two o'clock and the Cubs are playing. And Sammy's hitting these guys these home runs. Just like I became a baseball fan after that. And so, um, but the O3 team was just like, you know, just gosh, man, they, they were 98, 99. They're just awful, 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 awful. And then it's like you, they finally break through and they beat the team of all teams, the Yankees. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but man, my favorite Marlin, it is hard. I'd have to give you like a top five. Cause I, I really honestly can't choose just one. Arias is doing a very good job of trying to break into that right now. I'll tell you that <laughs> much, man. Sheesh. That's Venezuela and Tony Gwynn right there, man. We actually got that guy. I'm I'm still surprised he's on our roster. I really am. So am uh, I, man. But yeah, you know Luis Castillo. Uh, you know I, I love. It. I think he he should have his number retired. I don't, he I agree. Really actually, should. I do I agree with that. That number too. one should be hanging up someplace, right? Yeah, I agree. Uh, Dontrell, obviously the best. Uh, you know the fact that he followed me on my account is just like oh. Oh, <laughs> like I wish I could go back in high school and just tell myself, look what happened. You're going to be talking to this dude. So um, uh, Don Trell, uh, Giancarlo, of course, I still miss him. I still miss those massive dongs. You know, that's 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 number three. Uh, as far as guys I didn't really see, Gary Sheffield, because I wish I could have seen the majesty of that bat wiggle and all that stuff. Just I, I just I look back at the highlights. I'm just like. My goodness gracious, get that man into the Hall of Fame so we can have a representative, right? <laughs> um, and yeah, uh, that's top four right now. I guess that's a Mount Rushmore of my favorites. That's pretty, I mean, top Rushmore is yeah, more than enough of four people. That, that, that's that's really solid. Sweet. I mean, my favorite ever is Edgar and Taria. And I, I, if anybody knows how I could find an Edgar and Taria 1997 jersey, please let me know because I've looked for it on eBay and everywhere. And that just, I, I wanted to Hard. customize it, but they're not giving you that option either. But uh, yeah. Edgar and Taria is my guy, Colombian. So, and he had that winning RBI. Everybody remembers correct Council, but it's Edgar and Taria that got that hit. 
All right. If you are listening on audio, thank you for listening all the way through. If you are watching on YouTube, thank you for watching all the way through. Like, subscribe, give us five stars on the audio platforms. Follow us. Follow the my Marlins historian. And uh, again, thank you, Francisco, for joining us. We appreciate your time. And we will catch you next week when we're celebrating so a couple more series wins. Until then, peace.